Hello fellow hunters, I'm Darren Cummings with Hunting Science Explained and today we're going to talk about one of the most misunderstood concepts in all of archery hunting and that is kinetic energy and the impact that the arrow's weight has on it. So is a heavy arrow going to generate more energy or is the old adage the speed kills going to hold up to scrutiny? So to understand this debate there's a few things that we have to understand about energy and the most important is that you cannot create or destroy energy. You can only transfer it from one form to another. When we're talking about the energy of a bow, it all starts in the limbs, and we can easily calculate how much energy we're going to be able to store in the limbs simply understanding the force and the distance. So the force is the force that you exert on the bow, which obviously sounds like the draw weight, and the distance is the distance that you draw that weight. Sounds an awful lot like the draw length. However, it's not quite that straightforward. And I'm going to use this graph to help illustrate that point. The first thing to understand is that this draw distance is not your entire draw length. Instead, it's the distance that you drew that arrow back before releasing it. One of the numbers that will be advertised with a bow is the brace height. And that's simply the distance from the string to where the arrow is knocked at. Now, the smaller that distance, the longer the distance you'll pull that back. There are a few drawbacks, however, to having a small brace height. We'll get into that in a future video. So we've discussed this distance, but we need to discuss this weight. Now this weight is not your peak draw weight from beginning to end. If you've pulled a bow back, you've noticed that the weight, the resistance begins to build up. You'll hit your peak draw weight, and then it'll let off in typically what's referred to as the valley before you hit that back wall, at which point you'll be holding only your let off. So let's, let's actually try to show that on this graph and uh, we can, I can point out what it means. So you'll begin to pull back, it'll draw up, you'll, you'll start to feel that resistance, you'll come up to your peak draw weight, you'll level out there, and then at some point you'll start to fall off. Now this is your let off. So the higher your let off, the lower this point comes down here on your curve. You may have heard of a bow that's referred to as a speed bow. Uh, typically what this means is the they manufacturer has done a little work and tweaked this curve a little bit to try to get just a little more out of it. And what that might look like is you'll, you'll build up that resistance a little more quickly. You'll then hit your peak draw weight. And it'll hold a little bit further out before coming down and hitting the let off. So what that gives you is this extra area right here under this curve. Now a lot of times there'll be a complaint with a speed bow and that's that it feels like it wants to rip your arm out of the socket if you don't hold it very sturdily against that back wall. And that's because of this extra little area right here. If you, if you let off holding it just a little bit and it pulls forward, the amount of force that it's going to recover is going to go up and it's going to give you that feeling of wanting to rip your arm out of the socket. So how do we use this chart to understand the energy that's being stored in the limbs? Now for this particular example, while this isn't possible, we're pretending we have a bow that pulls the peak weight from when you first begin to pull it until it hits the back wall. Now to calculate the area under this curve, we first have to know this distance. So we'll say this is a 30 inch draw, it has about a 6 inch riser, so it's, a, it's probably a speed bow. Uh, that gives us then about 24 inches or 2 feet. So to calculate the uh, energy that would be stored in these limbs, it is as simple as 70 pounds times 2 feet or 100 40 foot pound. Now I'm sure you're thinking 140 foot pounds is about double what most bows are capable of. And you need to remember here, this would be if you could pull that peak weight the entire way from the beginning to the end. So it would be almost impossible to pull this out of the hole from the start and it would be very difficult to hold 70 pounds back while you're waiting for a deer to step out. 
So how would we get the area under a curve for something that's a little more realistic to a modern compound bow? Well, we could do some complicated calculus, but we can do some simple math and get a pretty good approximation. So we broke this down into some smaller areas, and we were able to come up with the total of the area under this curve, and it's 110 foot-pounds. Now, you can see that that's 30 foot-pounds less than our theoretical maximum, but that's of course because we have to give up this area and this area in order to make that bow usable. Now, if you've looked at a bow recently, you know that 110 foot-pounds is still well above anything you would see on the market. So the question then is, if the limbs are able to hold 110 foot-pounds worth of energy, where does the remaining 30, 40 foot-pounds go? Remember I said earlier that we can't create or destroy energy. We can only transfer it from one form to another. Well, in this case, you're transferring some of that energy into the vibration of the limbs, which is going to create sound uh, and heat to a lesser degree and you're going to dissipate that energy that way. So a heavier arrow may be able to harness a bit more of this energy that's stored in the limbs. Now that's only because it'll stay in contact with that string for just a split second longer and allow a little bit more of that energy to transfer to the arrow instead of the vibration of the limbs. So this equation says energy is force times distance. In that graph that we just used, that's how we looked at it. We had a force and a distance. This second equation says that that same energy, once you transfer it into the arrow and it's flying, is also equal to one half the mass times the velocity squared. So this tells us the amount of energy that we stored in the limbs. This tells us how much energy those limbs are going to impart to that arrow. Since we know our energy, we could use the mass of the arrow and the broad head or the field point to get the velocity. The important thing to understand about the velocity here is it's squared. So as our mass goes up, our velocity isn't going to go down at the same rate. It's actually going to go down quicker over time. So this is a graphical representation of what that means. So as your mass goes up in a straight line, your velocity drops off quicker and quicker. Now why this is important is because as you go up an arrow weight just a little bit, your velocity isn't affected only a little bit, it may be affected quite a bit more. If anybody remembers back even 10 years ago, there was a big push by the bow manufacturers to make a faster and faster bow. The saying was always that speed kills. Now today it seems like while they're still making bows that are incrementally faster, this race to make the fastest bow uh, isn't as hot of a topic as it was. And I've actually seen quite a few people who've actually started to use a heavier arrow uh, to try to increase their momentum because they say that speed isn't that important. But that will bring us to a couple of other very important topics that we'll talk about here in the future. The first is momentum, and the second is what impact does speed have on a hunting situation? So with our first lesson on energy, what are the key takeaways? The first one, and I think the most important one, is that the energy in the bow comes from you pulling it back. It comes from your muscles. Uh, and then that energy is transferred to the arrow. So the energy in that bow, the, the most important things that go into the amount of energy that will end up in that arrow are your draw weight, your draw length, and the profile of what that draw cycle looks like. So in terms of the initial kinetic energy, there is almost no difference between using a light arrow and a heavy arrow. Now in a future episode, we will get into momentum and how a heavier arrow uh, will have some impact on that. At the same time, in another episode, we will be getting into what speed accomplishes and why speed is also very important. So while we cover the theory today, in the next episode we'll get into the practical side of it. We'll get out in the field and we'll look at what this kinetic energy means to bow hunting. Run, boys, run, cause he got his gun. Listen to what I say. So we 
we set our theoretical maximum as 93.3 foot pounds would be if from the beginning of your draw all the way to the end of it. Really, Moth, come on, I'm shooting a video here. 